Good morning. Craig Howard here. I uh, was reading about a place in California. There's a certain trail that people hike, and apparently it's a terrible trail. It's um, the Pacific Crest Trail, and apparently it's it's a terribly rugged trail to hike. It's some 2,650 miles long, and it goes the whole length of California all the way up into Canada. And there are parts of it that are just absolutely unbearable almost to hike. Um, twists and turns and steps and all, all sorts of things. But there are people every year that do their best to hike that trail. I forget how many steps the article said, how many steps, six million steps. Six million steps it takes to hike that trail. Um, and yet people do it every year and it, it exhausts some people. And there are people along that trail that have kind of taken on the, the role of being, they call them trail angels. And what they are is people that set up tents or campers or whatever in their yard during the hiking season. And people will just stop there. And this one lady in particular, she started doing this. Uh, her name is Donna Softly. Uh, and she and her husband set up tents and a camper trailer and uh, they decided that they were going to, to take people in along the trail. Uh, they were going to take care of them and take them in. And, and she said it's, you know, she said the trail has a way of causing you to see the difficult paths in life. And I see my home sort of like a church where people can come and they can find rest and they can find comfort. And she's taken this on as kind of a ministry. She and her husband have taken this on as kind of a ministry um, in 2015, they saw something like 1,200 people stay at their little house that just happens to be along the trail. Um, and she said she loves hearing people out in the yard laughing and talking and refreshing themselves. She calls it her trail congregation. But it made me think about how we get opportunities all the time to do areas of ministry that sometimes we don't even recognize her there. I mean, she lives along this trail, but she could she didn't have to go to the to the extent of setting up these tents and opening her home and probably her restroom facilities and all of that. You know, she didn't have to go to the extent of doing that. But she saw a ministry opportunity. She saw a chance to offer people uh, to give people some help that she had the opportunity to do. You know, sometimes we find all kinds of little things if, we're, if, we, if our eyes are open. We can see all sorts of little opportunities that God gives us to minister to people. And sometimes they're unique. Sometimes they're unique to us. Sometimes we're the only ones that can accomplish that. If she didn't live along that trail, she couldn't do it. Uh, but she just happened to live close enough to that trail that she offered people that opportunity. She saw the opportunity to have this ministry and she took it. But you know, you have opportunities for people at work. You have opportunities for people in your community. You have opportunities to minister to people um, in, in your neighborhood, uh, maybe with your neighbors. Um, you have opportunities to minister sometimes right within your own home, within your own family. Uh, it's just a matter of looking around and saying, okay, God, open my eyes to the opportunities that you have given me today to be one of your ministers. Um, there's a verse of scripture that I sometimes, a couple of verses I wanna share with you this morning. This first one is found in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse nine. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He said, you're special people. If you're a child of God this morning, you're a special person that God has called to a special place and is going to give special opportunities to. It tells us over in, there was another one that I wanted to share. I believe it's Hebrews 13 too. Let me look real quick. I want you to think about this. It says in Hebrews 13 too, do not forget to entertain strangers 
For by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. I don't know if I've ever been given an opportunity to entertain an angel. I don't know if you've ever been given the opportunity to entertain an angel. I don't know. Maybe you have, maybe we have, maybe we haven't. But I do know that God says, you're a special people. And special people are often called upon for special duties and special responsibilities. And so my challenge to you this morning is, take the opportunities that God gives you. It's too easy to just sit back in our comfortable chairs and say, oh, I'm just going to relax and enjoy life. And we miss so many opportunities for blessing in our own life. I want to remind you that blessings come by being a blessing to others. They don't come by somebody handing you a blessing. As you are a blessing to others, you find blessings in your own life. Well, my time is gone. My scaredy cat peanut, who never, ever comes and sits on anybody's lap or anything, must have been cold this morning because she jumped up here and is sitting on my lap. And she, if I picked her up to show her to you, she'd run away. Uh, she, she never allows anybody. This is peanut. Say hi, Peanut. <laughs> but anyhow, you uh, you take the opportunities that God gives you today, and you're going to find blessing on the other side of them. You may be uniquely positioned to present that blessing to somebody that nobody else can. Well, I got to go. I will see you, Lord willing, tomorrow. God bless.